This is one of the most controversial and contentious topics in mountain biking. That's right, Mark. It's something that could be argued all day long, and it is bike colour. Bike colour. What's what the, is the one? right one yeah. for mountain biking? It's all coming up <gasps> on, on the, the Dutch Dutch Show. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the Dutch Ed Show with me, Martin Ashton, and me, Rich Payne. <laughs> How are you, Rich? I'm very well, mate. How's your fine self? Ah, uh, really good. Thank you very excellent, much. Excellent. Um, lockdowns, lockdowns, driving me slightly mad. But but I'm getting through it. And I'm there's not long it. to go. Apparently not. About a that's, week. That's that's what I've heard. Yeah. Yeah, um, it's all it's all good though. What about yourself? You've been riding much, dude. I've been getting a few spins in locally. We've been out on a few shoots uh, in some cool places. So yeah, I've been uh, I've been getting the wheels turning a little bit. I've been getting it going. Nice, nice. Now we have got a very fun topic today. We're going to be mm. talking about color choice of your mountain bike and all the reasons why you would and wouldn't pick a color for your bike. Yeah. Um, but before we get into that, Rich, could uh, we just drop into the news? Let's do it. Here's the news. We start this week's news talking of Chris Ackrig's new edit, Full Force. Now, we missed this on last week's Dirt Shed Show. It came out the day after, but we did get the exclusive over on EMBN. Steve Jones talked to Chris Ackrig all about the new edit and riding e-bikes, of course, which is what he's featured on in Full Force. Chris Ackrig, uh, a fantastic trials rider. Um, I used to battle against him and he is incredibly tough. Awesome street rider and of course, fixie gear freestyler too. Um, Chris's new edit is amazing and it doesn't disappoint. So make sure you check out Full Force. It's absolutely awesome. Next up, we're talking about Traction Coffee Company. Now this is half owned by Yeti Fox rider, Sean Near, uh, and they have announced their collaboration with the Grow Cycling Foundation and they've created their Grow Cycling Roast um, and they will be giving proceeds from that product to the cause which is fantastic um, so if you're feeling like you need maybe a bit of a um, caffeine hit anytime soon maybe give Traction Coffee a go they sound like the right people right now, time for some giveaway announcements, our competition winners. Now, if you were in on the KMC giveaway competition and your name appears on the screen in the next three seconds, you're a winner. Congratulations to Kevin Pinch, Daniel Carl Sarita and Mikkel Nielsen. You will be receiving an email from us very soon so we can get your postage details. Congratulations to you guys. Now, next up, I've been really looking forward to announcing the winner of this competition. It's the Muck Off Year's Supply. I wanted to win this myself, but I wasn't allowed to enter. Damn it. But look at all this amazing stuff. Okay, I'm gonna announce the winner in the next moment. Is it you? It is. Costas Passas, congratulations. You've got yourself a year's supply of Muck Off. We're all very, very jealous. That is awesome news. Um, while I'm uh, in this little bit of competition announcement, I'm just gonna give you a reminder. You can head over to GMBN Tech after watching the Dirt Shed Show this week um, and get in on our Vittoria giveaway competition. But you need to be watching the Dirt Shed Show on its release date on Tuesday the 1st of December because you've only got until tomorrow, Wednesday the 2nd, to get in on that competition. So this is your last chance. Um, and if you've gone past that date, unlucky, you're gonna have to look out for the next competition on GMBN. Um, and I'm reminding, so let's talk about the GMBN shop as well, because we had an absolute banger of a time uh, over Black Friday with our exclusives there. We had 40% off some of those things um, and it went down an absolute storm. Cyber Monday, we've got this brand new hologram sticker that comes free with certain amount of purchase. So 
make sure you head over to GMBN shop. There's 50% off some things over on that store. Um, and of course you're supporting GMBN and helping us make mountain bike videos. So it's a great way to support us here on the channel. Uh, fantastic, if you can get involved there. Now, lastly, it is with a very heavy heart that I report the news of the passing of Dave Garland, um, a legendary World Cup mechanic. Uh, he's on the circuit for 20 years, uh, really highly regarded. Um, he was the man behind Super Alloy Racing Springs and the Stendek telemetry system. Um, a really fantastic guy and our thoughts are with the friends and family and extended mountain bike family of Dave Garland. Thank you very much for the news. But anyway, it's back to colour, Martin, a more important topic almost. Absolutely, yes. Now, stealth or go bold, whatever your choice, the colour of your bike is a big decision. On the surface, it seems like a trivial question. What difference does it really make? But you know what? Sometimes there's some actual reasons why you would choose a colour. And other times, a bike just really embodies how you feel when you're out on the thing. So let's get into it, Rich. Right. And I guess let's start with, Rich, what is your favorite color for a mountain bike? Oh, it's a, that's a tough one, Mark, but actually it's not color, it's colors. Ooh. Oh, okay. I, because okay. I am, do you know what? I am fond of bright colors and a bike that stands out a little bit. Now I'm not talking like a, a crazy brightly colored thing that looks like a unicorn's been sick all over it and it's just multicolored, <laughs> but like just a nice, bright, bold colour. So like I've got a Canyon Strive at the moment, which is this cool grey and sort of coral colour combo. And I'm really yeah. liking riding that. It's lovely. Yeah, so a nice bright and bold and quite solid colour maybe. Is yeah. Like a solid or, yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, I like where you're going with the solid. Now, I mean, I've been looking into the other presenters on GMBN and I think it's quite predictable and obvious to say that Neil <laughs> it, it is a fan of the stealth mm. black. We could see it coming. Bike, you know, something something understated. Um, yeah, it represents yeah. him, I think. Uh, and he always goes for that. But he has ridden some pretty colourful bikes in he his does, time. yeah, yeah. But he definitely would choose a stealth bike. Um, Doddy at the moment, interestingly, um, I mean, Doddy's ridden every bike uh, That's there true. is, I would have thought, out yeah. there. But his favourite bike at the moment is this Newt Proof. <laughs> the colour is depressed aubergine. <laughs> They didn't have Depressed any happy ones at the time. Aubergine. Yeah, it's a really weird name, yeah. um, but he loves he loves the colour. But he does say that the name choice was, you know, uh, I'm not going to say what he said about the name choice. No. Um, Blake's favourite colour mm. is. Um, what? I mean, we all know what Blake's. What's Blake's favourite colour? I think it might be green. He's gone with green, <laughs> uh, and I guess. What's yours, Mark? That's one of that's what. Well, my my favourite colour for a bike. I, I do, and I've mentioned it lots of times on the, the Dirt Show Show, I do love the turquoise of, of a Yeti, that sort of classic yep. turquoise Yeti. Um, I think that's really great because I like how the brand has sort of taken some ownership over that colour and given it a, it's almost its identity comes through that. And I always think if you see a bike like a Trek or something else like that that's using that turquoise colour, it kind of froze me because I'm like, hang on a minute. Double that's, take. Yeah, that's weird. Um, and it makes me think about um, motorcycle brands have, have often taken a colour on board, like yellow Suzuki, red Honda, green Kawasaki, orange KTM, blue Yamaha, although Yamaha were yellow. They were in the early days. On. Yeah, so I mean, motorcycle brands have owned it in, in motocross racing and uh, motorcycle trials. Mountain biking, it hasn't happened that much except for on Yeti. So I like that colour yep. because of that. That was a long answer. I'm no. sorry, Rich. I went off on one there. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I think if I was to choose a colour for myself, um, I do like, I do. Uh, so it's not turquoise then? Well, I thought that was your answer after all that. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? Oh, I find it difficult to answer this question, oh. even though I come up with a topic myself. Yeah. I find it very hard to pick a colour, but I guess, yeah, I guess if I was going to... Uh, but <laughs> I'm conflicted, Rich. I'm conflicted because Mark, I've got to be honest, on? I don't think I'd choose a Yeti. <sighs> wow. Okay, uh, my favourite colour 
is a turquoise Cannondale. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> ah! Unbelievable. <laughs> oh, man. Rich, take us through some reasons why picking a colour is even important. Are there any valid reasons uh, you why know, you I, would pick a colour? I think there are. I think So let's start with, like, uh, resale value. So, like, aftermarket yeah. resale value. Yeah, that's a good point. Because if you get the colour choice wrong when mm. you buy it, it might be a colour that everyone else hates. Yeah, you could be stuck. Same with uh, if you get if you custom, like get a customised bike to the colour schemes that yeah. you want. Because quite a lot of brands now, they're like uh, Trek and Orbea, you can like customise, you know, Project One and the Mayo system. You can yeah. choose what colours. But obviously that's good for mm. you. But if you want to sell a bike down the line, yeah, you narrow yeah, the market, gonna, don't you? It could be. It could be that. Um, yeah, it's that thing, you know, when you see someone driving around in a Porsche and it's in brown. And you're like, why did you buy a brown Porsche? <laughs> brown any car. Yes, brown is never a good choice. Mm, no. Not in my opinion. What about some valid reasons, Rich? Okay, Mark, well, I've got a few for you here. Uh, let's start with what about sort of aftermarket resale value? Yes. Because Yes, because you want to be able to move it on, don't you? Exactly, yeah. You don't want to be sort of a... Uh, well, a lot of people buy and sell bikes after maybe a couple of years, they'll ship it on and get a new version or something. So something that's going to be appealing to a lot of people still is going to make the resale value a lot higher. Um, yeah. For sure. You know, and that's why black, that's why black is probably a very popular colour as well. I think so, yeah. Because no one's offended by it. Everyone's yeah. like, oh, nice stealth bike. Yeah, you're it's right. It's easy. Certainly sort of plain yeah. single colours. And it's the, the, the real problem can come in. You know when you get like custom bikes? Yes. So obviously if yeah. you go, you're like, oh, have you seen this sick? I've just customised my bike. It's pink and yellow, Mr. Blobby tribute bike. And you're <laughs> like, that's an awesome bike for you. Oh no, I need to sell it. Who the hell's going to buy that? Yeah. That's yeah. tough. That's actually, that's actually a really good point. And something that it's easy to live with. Oh, yes. Because if you, if you pick a colour that is like, really vibrant, like say like a, like a shocking pink yep. or something like that, and you you love it on the day. It looks great in the showroom, but how will it look a year later in your garage? You know, can you still live with it? You know, you come down to your garage, you've got your shocking pink bike in there, but you've got green socks on, oh. and, and you're like, oh, God, I just a, can't do this today. It's exhausting. It's a colour explosion. Your bike ends up looking yeah. like something a unicorn's puked over. <laughs> Not good, not good. Uh, not good at all. What about looking clean all the time? So I, I, I'm talking like not showing up the mud and the marks and stuff so much. So yeah. you know all like the little fine scratches that sort of just develop over time and all the little bits of mud that get ingrained, you know, something like that as well. Yeah, no, you want to get you want to get something that, that can... I mean, what would be a colour that could do that? Probably a grey. Yeah, There's like a some dark greys grey. that do that very well. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah. hide all the sins. Like white ain't going to do it, is it? Sins. No, mm -mm. no. White, white really shows all the muck. It does. It? I, my one of my favourite bikes I had for myself was a custom bike from Hope, um, and it was actually an inspired frame. Okay. Um, inspired trials bike, but Hope had done a great paint job on it with a decal set and all oh, the nice. custom green parts, and it looked really cool. But it, it, you had to clean it after every show. It was a nightmare because it, it just showed all the muck. Yeah. Mud. But it did look cool when it was clean. That's though. the thing though, white, when it's new, white looks amazing, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. Same really with like strong, white really kit strong. and all that sort of government. It looks, and then you use it and you're like, oh no, doesn't look the same. Yeah, what about picking a colour for just that really sort of like represents you and your personality? Ooh. So like, um, like said about Neil, he loves it stealth, yeah. dark, understated, yeah. doesn't want to show off, yeah. lets his riding do the talking. He does. Yeah, so that's when a color, you know, a color is important that way. Yeah, true. Yeah, uh, yeah, a hundred percent. I think that's Neil is actually a great example, isn't it? Because Neil's favorite bike color is black. Yeah. I think we could say, and that sort of does represent him, sort of like he's like the Dark Knight. He's like Batman, without being Batman <laughs> that we know of. Wow, you know what, right? No offense, Neil. Right? If I found out Batman was Neil, uh. I'd be disappointed. <laughs> or real for a matter that matter. Well, I mean, I'd love Batman to be real, but it, I wouldn't want him to be real if actually Bruce Wayne was Neil Donahue. <laughs> that would just be like, but I know him. 
But that's the whole thing, isn't it? That's the point, isn't it? Yeah, I'd want it to be a bit more glamorous than that. Uh, oh, anyway, okay. um, what about, I tell you what, one reason you might have a particular favourite colour, and I think everyone's going to have a, an idea on this, is there's a particular bike in history, either because of a race it was uh, in or an event it was at. Maybe you saw this bike yeah. and the rider on it live somewhere. Yeah. Have you got a bike that sticks in your mind for Ooh. that? I've got a couple, but there, yeah. I, I've got it. And I tell you, do you know what? It'd be mental if you had the same one, Mark. But I've got one in my yeah. head that really stands out, and it's Steve Peets, and he's had a lot of custom bikes, but his 2005, I, I think it was, black oh, and yellow orange. Yeah. And he also that won, bike. yeah, he won Fort Wheel World Cup on it that year as well. So Fort William and Oh, mate, I can see the image in my mind, which is, go on, what is that moment you're When he, about? he crossed the line, didn't he? And then he looked yeah. back and he'd won and he was like, ah, bike above head. He's like, yes. Yes. Oh, and he, what you know, a moment. I know, but it's like <laughs> British rider, Goosebumps. British venue, British bike. Yeah. What more could you ask for? Special, special, and that makes that bike iconic. Yes. And it was such a strong look, wasn't it? It was almost like a wasp. Exactly, it's bike. like the whole package of that yeah. that bike and event just made that bike, for me, really stand yeah. out in my head. But, but what about you, Mike? Uh, Mike? Hello, Mike. Mark. Hi. Hey, Mike. <laughs> Mike Ashton, that's my dad. Um, <laughs> I tell you what, I've got a few bikes that spring to mind. Originally, I would have said something like uh, John Tomac's Rally from back in the day, okay. but I've changed my mind. Oh, I've changed purple. my mind because we were talking about brown bikes. Yeah, uh, yeah. One of the most iconic bikes for me as a trials rider is Danny McCaskill's brown <gasps> inspired 24 inch trials bike in his first YouTube video that basically launched his career. Danny Mac inspired bicycles. He's on a brown bike, and if I think oh, of yeah. an amazing moment in the mountain biking history, it's that video. It's a blooming brown bike. <laughs> I'm looking at it. You're um, right. It yeah. is a brown bike. Yeah. It's a brown bike. It's a it's a really brown bike. <laughs> yeah, naff looking bike. The next video he did was way back home, and it was bright orange, and it really was an iconic bike. Yes, that one. beautiful, oh, very very nice, lovely. So yeah, I mean, I've got a few I could pick. Hey, why don't you guys out there, viewers, give us your iconic bikes or your favorite colors and reasons why mm. oh, yeah. um, in the comment section down below. Maybe we can get some kind of consensus going on what is the most popular color. We've looked at some surveys. It looks like it is black, yeah. boringly. I know. Um, red and blue following up close. Red's, yeah. a, red's a really popular one. Yeah, isn't blue it? not far behind that, is it as well? And then yeah. white as well, yeah. not far behind that. Yeah, but let us know. Let us know for real. What is your favourite colour for a mountain bike yeah. and why in the comment section down below? Um, yeah, get discussing that point. Right, Rich, we're going to move oh. on with the show, but I've got to give you a bit of a warning at this point. Well, not just me. Because. Well, everybody out you guys there, because out there. we can't get to the rest of the show any other way than via the body bin. Oh, oh. Um, we've been sent some more horrible moments, um, and we can only understand these moments from their results. Uh, so, uh... unfortunately, it's the damaged pieces of human oh. that we're going to take a look at. If you are of the nervous disposition and you don't want to see gore and broken bones, skip to the next section. Just look, look in the time bar down below and skip to the next <laughs> section. I've warned you, yep, yeah. I've warned you. Let's dive right, in then, here Mark. We go. We're into the body bin and we're starting with, this one's not too bad, that's all right. A little cut on the knee from Joe. Ah, oh, he was at Fly Up Bike Park. He's got stitches. Uh, yeah, stitches, four big old stitches. That's That scar's gonna last. That's one of those scars you're gonna have when you're 45 yeah, years old. Yeah, that's true. But you know what's yeah. more disturbing here? Yeah. The silly sausage isn't wearing knee pads. He could have prevented it. <laughs> silly sausage. Yeah, what silly sausage? He should have had knee no pads on. No one says silly sausage. Silly sausage, Rich, is not something anybody says. Well, I say it. That's like you only, <laughs> you silly sausage. I'm bringing it back. It's the nicest way. It's the nicest way to tell someone they've been a bit of a dingbat. <laughs> a um, a dingbat. Yeah. A dingbat. Yeah, that's Mark. probably a dingbat. That's nearly as bad. Yeah. <laughs> God, we're we're tough guys, we're, aren't we? <laughs> bringing back classic British phrases. 
Yeah, um, I tell you what, I think Joe's got away with it here. It's a, it's a scar to be proud of, but yeah, knee pads. Come on, man. It's easy. Yeah. Could have just borne some knee pads. Yeah. This next, this next one, um, oh, I don't Oof. know how much more I can take. Yeah, this, this is... Uh, um, go on, you do Bayard. it, Mark. Yeah. He's, he's smashed up his wrist real bad. That looks nasty. There's some chunks missing there. Yeah. And, oh, his clavicle. He's done his shoulder at the same time. That's... But it's, I can't even see a collarbone in there, really. I can't see in this x-ray, whereas I, this... I think I know which bit's the collarbone, but it's all over the place. It doesn't look right. I'll give him that. Bayard no. has done a proper number on himself. Yeah, he said his clavicle was so badly broken he had to have surgery on it. I can see that. Uh, really nasty. So we've thrown a whole knee joint, one wrist and a shoulder <laughs> into the body bin this week. Oh, gone. I don't know what any of these guys are going to do without these parts, but if you would like to send in one of your gory photos, oh. and I dare you, go on, try and gore me out with the horrible oh. images of what's happened to you out on your bike, and we can at least uh, look at them and celebrate it in a way that's uh, slightly positive. Yeah. Um, and if you hate the body bin, let us know in the comment section down below, and maybe we won't do it anymore. Who knows? Let us know. It's up to you guys. It's your show. It's your show. But anyway, Mark, uh, right. what's it time for? Yes. It's time for... Hacks and Bodges. Hacks and Bodges. Hacks and Bodges. Hacks and Bodges. We should decide on the tempo of this song. We should. Because it's different every week. <laughs> It's different every week. It's terrible. It's terrible. Terrible every week. I've been told by many people not to sing anymore. Oh. Just saying. Um, it's a shame. Anyway, <laughs> let's go on with Hacks and Bodges. And this first one from Chris, who's got a whitey Jeffsy. Um, he's in uh, he's in your neck of the woods, Rich. Southwest is best. Taunton, Somerset. That's what we Taunton, like to see. Taunton, Somerset. Nice. Um, he's basically zip tied his shoes up, taken away the laces. Uh, Good idea, Rich. Bad idea. What do you think? Uh, as a quick hack, I guess it works, doesn't it? If you snap a lace and you got yeah. some zip ties, it keeps your shoes together. But he says here yeah. he did it, thought it looked cool, so he did the other one to match. Yeah. Now, but we, I think we've identified a problem with this, haven't we? Yes. Because, because you can only you can only go one way with it. Exactly. Tighter. Yeah. Now, yeah. what happens when you do them so tight you can't get your shoe off? Yeah. And the other thing is, is the top one could go tighter. Oh. And then all the others would be too loose. Yeah. So there's a few yeah, flaws, does, but as a sort of get you off the trail or get you home kind of thing, I think it does work. It's a good... It's a bodge. It's a bodge. It's a bodge. Um, next up, this is a hack. This is cool. This is Christian's 100% aircraft carbon helmet. Um, he has done a lovely nice. job. Nice, I like that. Custom helmet paint job. Muckoff-esque. Yes. Do you think? Yeah, it is. The sort of yeah. black and pink, but also uh, yeah. like the anime character on the top half as well is pretty sick as yeah. well. I like that. Yeah, a bit of manga in yeah. there. Um, lightning strikes. Like it a lot. Mm, very um, good. And I tell you what, that's on a, he's done that on a brand new helmet, so he's taken the plunge. It could have gone wrong. It could have gone wrong. Fair so he's play. Brave. Very, very brave. Um, next. next up. Mac. What Ma the Mac hell? with his Diamond Back Mission Pro out of Washington. <laughs> Uh, his oh shock was God. off being rebuilt. I guess he still wanted to ride, so basically he's just measured a bit of wood and put it in the linkage where the shock should be. It looks terrifying. Could he ride with that? Could he ride with that, I Is that possible? I don't think so, but what do you reckon? I think, I like to think he is, and I'd like it, I'd like to, I'd like to know what it's like. Does it feel really crazy? It worries me, Mark. It really worries me. I guess it just me. feels like a hardtail, doesn't it? Well, yeah, but I think there'd be a bit more flex in there. So like a soft tail? <laughs> I wonder if he used a hardwood or a softwood that would tune the ride characteristics. Yeah, is there like, could you put, could you use bamboo there and it have a bit of flex in it and it'd be almost like a natural suspension? Or like a bit of willow, Ooh. so it, fle it flexes as well. Flexes. <laughs> hey, someone should try that. Someone try that. And It'll then submit to it know. to the body bin next week. Yeah, yeah, you'll, you'll have a hack for the hack and a body part for sure. Uh, well, we've got to pick our favourite hack and bodge this week and we're going to give out a GMBN mug to our winner. Rich, who are you going to choose? I do like Max Wooden Shock. Yeah, it's a sh it'll be a shock, that's for sure. Go on then, we'll give it to Mac. <laughs> Congratulations, mate. You've won yourself 
a GMBN mug. That's winging its way to you. Winner, winner. Um, remember, everyone, if you've got a hacker or bodge, you've done something to your bike or to your bike cave, um, something clever out on the trail, oh, maybe, yeah. let us know. This stuff's not only entertaining, but sometimes it's really useful to everyone else, an idea that might just save them out on a ride. So please send them in to our GMBN uploader. We love seeing what you guys are getting up to. Um, and talking about what you've been getting up to, let's have a look at the caption contest. This little clip of Doddy, he's, he's, he's in two minds, basically. He's in two minds here. Um, we've had some good captions for it. Um, go on, uh, Rich, start us off with the captions. Okay, what, from, what are we going with? from Yuri Rozaznech. Have I yes. said that right? Rosaznesh? Rosaznesh? Great. Sounded great. Uh, me yeah. explaining to my wife where all the savings went. I'm sure we've all had that conversation. <laughs> yeah, it, you could almost put a voice over Dolly there, couldn't you? You could. Well, um... Uh, I just needed yeah. those new forks. That's what <laughs> I needed them. Christopher Kababe says you could use maybe one or two or three zip ties to fix this. Yeah, yeah that's uh, you know what though, Doddy is not the zip tie is not the go-to method for Doddy now because you know he's someone who really thinks about uh, you know the planet and he he does think you know plastics. Yeah, yeah. Maybe zip ties are not something that you should be booming around with so much. No, so he even Doddy's turning on them. He did. Yeah. Oof, yeah. He, but he does still love a zip tie a bit. He does yeah, still love it, and he knows lots of ways to use them. Uh, I can um, do this name, anymore? Gary Millard. Nice, that's a yeah. good one. Uh, when you don't speak Italian, but you're trying anyway. We've all done that, haven't we? We've all gone on a bike holiday <laughs> hey, and yeah. been like, that pizza. <laughs> Without, sorry, I don't hey, want to offend yeah, any you Italians, know, uh, but you know what I mean. You know, uh, hey, uh, you know. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one, actually. It um, is. You know what? I've made a mistake in this show, Rich, <gasps> okay? And I, I'm just going to... I'm going to be real about it. I'm going to change it up, right? Okay. We gave away a mug in the Hacks and Bodges. Yeah. Actually, I want to give away a mug here. Okay, so are we so, giving away two mugs? No. Oh. I'm the mug. We're giving away... Mac is getting a GMBN race top. How about that? Oh, well nice. done, Mac. Upgrade. My mistake. You've upgraded because, you know, a hack, that's a big win. That's a big win. So it's a GMBM race top to Mac in Hacks and Bodges. Yep. Sorry about that. Um, and a GMBM mug is going out to who this week, Rich? I like I'll be, I like Yuri Rosaznech. Expl me explaining, explaining to my, to my wife, wife where all the savings went, because I think we can all relate and have all been there. Yeah, we can, we can, yes. Um, Jury, you are a winner, and you are getting a GMBM mug, I promise. I'm not changing anything. <laughs> That's how it's happening. <laughs> Um, right, thank you for those. Um, this is this week's caption contest photo. Oof. And if you would like to win, yes, a GMBM mug, we've been over this. <laughs> um, leave us a caption in the comment section down below and you could be next week's winner. Be inventive, be creative. Anything. Give us something special to that photo. Look at it, what does it bring to mind? Have you got a caption could go with that, Rich? Uh, speechless. Good. I'm speechless. Control. I'll have to think of a good um, one. Yeah, have a go. <laughs> right, we're um, going to take a look at what's coming up on the channel this week. It's a great week. We've got some good things happening. Take a look at these. Episode 11 of Crash Course, uh, where I'll take a look at the crashes you've sent in. The weather sucks. How can I ride when the weather's terrible outside?
going for the bike vault, Richie. Are you ready? I am. I love the bike vault. Oh, me oh, too. Hang on. Um, look at this. Look at this. We're in with Jace's giant Yukon fatty. <laughs> Ooh, look nice. at this. Blake would love it. He would. What do you think of a fat bike? Rich, do you like a fat bike? I, I like them. Fit for purpose. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so you want to see it on the snow and stuff. Yeah. You don't want to see it out on the road. I don't want to see someone cruising around town on one. But yeah, you I mean, do, this guy... You do see it, though. Yeah, exactly. Look, the Rockies, Canada. Yeah. That's got to be fit for... That's perfect, isn't it? Perfect. And I like it. This one... Uh, Neil would like this, too. Stealth. It is very, very stealth. stealth, yes. Yeah, what are you giving that? That's a nice. It's a nice from me. <laughs> okay. Uh, no? <laughs> no? Yeah, no, it's done now. It's done. It's a nice. <laughs> um, next up, we've got Jasper's Canyon Spectral. Love this bike. Yeah. I've always loved this bike. Is, Very cool. It's a good this silhouette. This is in Eindhoven. Yeah, it's hard to tell what colour it is. It almost looks like it's in that... Um, it's almost, it almost is like a grey or a green it's hard to tell the colour yeah. I'm fixated with the colours this week it's a great shot though yeah. a silhouette shot it's and awesome. you can just about make out the Kashima coated forks as well you can yeah nice. can, can I give this a super nice please because I love this bike of course you can mate there you go she's a super yeah, nice that's a super nice um, next up we've got a very strong red Mondraker Ooh. Foxy R in yes. Prague from Andre uh, well, this is a really good okay, one. Okay, off we go. It's got Saint brakes on it, RF turbine dropper and stem, Atlas handlebars. Oh, I like a bit of spec. It's got SRAM NX and Shimano yeah. XT with a carbon 6C cranks. Absolute black oval chainring. Oh, it's got it all, man. It's got it all. I think that is pretty tidy, isn't it? And I'm, I'm reaching for the bell, eh? Go on, hit that bell. That's a super nice, man. Nice one, That's Andre. A That's a good one. I like that. Next up, oh, Ooh. this is from Julian. It's his Vita Summit. And now, I don't want to be disparaging about this bike, but it could be something that represents your unicorn puke a little bit. <laughs> Couldn't it? There's a lot of colors on there. It's looking that I mean, way, buddy. It's. But I mean, is it working or is it not working? Is that something on the handlebars? A yellow thing on the handlebars? It's yellow it's like and blue, Ford. isn't it? Yeah. Is that part of the bike? Because if that's part of the bike, then this is just a nice. Because you can't mix the blue, the yellow, the pink, and the grey. It's, it's, it's too much. It's making my eyes go a bit crazy. I mean, I like it, but it's making my brain frazzle. You know what, it, You know what, Rich? It's nice. It's nice. It is it's still nice. nice. Yeah, definitely. It's nice. Well done, Julian. It's a nice bike. Can't argue with you. No. Next up, we have got Sammy's mm. 2020 Giant Rain. Love it. That's Love tidy, isn't it? In, in Lapland. This is in oh. Lapland. Nice. That's nice. where Santa's from. I like from. this colourway. Yeah. Yeah, it is, isn't it? Yep. It is. You can go to Lapland and meet Santa. Timely. Santa. And I like this I like this colourway. I don't know how I'd describe it. It's almost like... um. It looks like the paint's almost been rubbed away. You know, the black's been rubbed yeah, away yeah, yeah, to reveal yeah. this dark green. I don't know. It's like That's a scratch card. Cool. He's like yes. scratched away and it's got the colour yeah, underneath. Yeah, it's like a scratch card. It's, oh, it's really nice. That's tidy, I like isn't it? A lot. I like that. And I've against... revealed. Oh, sorry, yeah. mate. I've revealed what I think of it, I think. Yeah, I like it. And there's some really good parts on there, actually, as well. I can see some, uh, those descendant cranks. Uh, oh, yeah. Fox rear shock. Yeah. Lovely. I think that's super nice for me, mate. What do you reckon? Super nice for me, man. It's very cool. Good very job. Cool. Good job, Sammy. Like it. Um, Oh, next up, we have got a shocking blue bike, Transition Patrol from Julian, and he's given us a great spec list, wow, which yes. I love. I love seeing all the spec of the bike. Oh, we've got RockShox Yari on the front. We've got Hope Wheel Set, uh, SRAM bottom bracket. Got Shimano XT brake set, four pistons. Uh, what else we've got on there that's cool? We've got a fabric saddle. Access reverse seat post. Clamp. Yeah, oh, a bit we've got of some wireless. lovely stuff on there. Um, grips, Deity Knuckle Dusters, um, Axis Tires. It's a great setup. It's very cool. I like the bright blue as well. I do I like, like that, I like actually. The, yeah. I like that a lot. What are you going to say? Um, is it nice? I don't know if it's sticking its head up above the parapet. It's nice. It's nice. It is nice. It's, it's a very nice, nice bike. But it's, do you know what, though? There's a bit of an odd mixture of components on there because... You've got. That's what I thought. You've That's got like your, GX, your, your GX group set, but then you've got like the access dropper. Yeah, it's kind of weird. 
yeah, but yeah, you know, I was getting a bit lost in the in the um, medley there. But I like I like having that information, people. Yeah, send nice. us in your components as well. Um, lastly, in the bike vault this week, we've got Travis's Evil Reckoning. Oh, I like this. The unicorn's like been this. at it again. I like it, man. I like it. Seeing that weird because I guess this is a love hate bike. I would guess. I'm I'm not saying I dislike it. It's pretty cool. It stands out a lot. But like you've got the green frame. Yeah. Blue cranks, blue rims, blue forks, yeah. blue rims. Purple hubs. Purple, like, centres on the rotors and stuff. Yeah. Purple grips, it's maybe? It's nuts. I think what... It makes me think... the It makes me think about the riders a bit like, go for it. I yeah. think Travis is a bit go for it. Yeah, he's an out there kind I of guy. I like it. I don't know how livable this bike is, though. Mm, I don't know how yeah. livable it is. But for today, for me, it's a super nice. Uh, overruled, okay, super nice. <laughs> <laughs> you sounded gutted about that. <laughs> sounded gutted. Um, that was a fantastic bike vault. What bike have you got out there? Is it good? Of course it's good. Obviously. Is it nice? Of course it's nice, it's a bike. Is it but super is nice? It super yeah. nice. Ooh, that's the question. Does anyone want to find out? Send it in to the GMBN uploader. Um, right, it's time for some of your successes and some of your failures oh. from this week. It's time for fails and sends. Rich, hold tight for a minute. Oh my goodness. Go. Okay, let's go. Some went right, some went wrong. Tell you what, Rich, it has been an amazing show. Thank you once again for being part of it. Mark, it's, it's, been been a, awesome it's been a pleasure. Time. Love it. Yeah, great fun. And thanks to you guys for sending in all your stuff and getting involved. Um, don't forget, the GMBN uploader is there for you to send us all of your action. The comment section down below this video is where you can tell us all about your riding. Uh, please be part of it. Give us a love, like, and share on our social media. Yep. Uh, and don't forget to watch along with all our videos this week. But for now, it's goodbye from me. And it's goodbye from him. See you later, Thanks Rich. Thanks a lot, guys. And see you all soon. <laughs>